Well, we got some brand new images to talk about today. Some more images came courtesy of Baidu and Weibo, the Chinese message boards across the other side of the globe. A bunch of factory images that while they dropped on Saturday um, and started to surface on that side, uh, they didn't show up on the Western message boards. And so I didn't want to cover it too much. We got a slew of images on Monday that we talked about, a ton of stuff, but these were not part of that initially. And now we have them here today, opened up a whole bunch of discussions and stuff, and we're going to talk about it. It's a Transformers Legacy Evolution Voyager class Tarn that clearly has been repainted and retooled into potentially the pretender samurai himself, the one-time leader of the Decepticons, Bludgeon, a personal favorite of mine. And um, <clears throat> it seems to continue this long-standing tradition of bludgeon. This started back with Robots in the Skies in 2001, that series, of bludgeon being repainted into something whenever it's a tank or some kind of military vehicle. We had that Hero G2 Megatron that was turned into bludgeon, and that started that little trend. If it's a tank, if it's some kind of military vehicle, turn it into bludgeon. Give it a sword or some kind of melee weapon. And sure, we got some great uh, standalone tooled, unique molded bludgeon toys throughout the years. That Revenge of the Fallen version still to this day is one of the best, in my opinion. And even though it is a movie toy, it still stands in my classics and generation display just because it represents that bludgeon so well. Um, so we could tell that this is clearly some kind of a test shot of a bludgeon figure primarily because of the sword accessory included and because he is a tank, again, going off of the history and past of our Transformer brand. Uh, once again, this thing is lacking the head, which no doubt is going to be a new sculpted bludgeon samurai-looking head sculpt that we'll see at some point, and that new sword that's included with everything on top of all the Tarn-related stuff cements even more so that this is a bludgeon in connection. Even the sword is slightly designed to kind of look like that IDW bludgeon sword, which had like kind of a more jagged edge to it. So that kind of also goes in that direction. And speaking of IDW, since this is using the Tarn mold, um, some uh, you know might see those connections there between this and that of the IDW bludgeon design that was also done by Alex Milne. Both Tarn and IDW Bludgeon were designed by Alex Milne, so you could see kind of those connections there within the comic version. It's not 100% there, but you do see it. Uh, that Tarn design itself was, um, excuse me, that IDW Bludgeon design itself was actually slightly based off of the uh, Robots in Skies 2015 Bludgeon toy, which actually that toy wasn't even meant to be Bludgeon. It was originally a character called Blast Wave. And it was repainted from that, and, you know, it's, it's complicated with this character. He always has weird toy history. Anyhow, uh, when, it, when you compare the robot mode from the front with the original Voyager Tarn, uh, nothing is pretty much clear that this is a bludgeon retool. I mean, it's pretty much just a straight-up repaint. But now you could kind of see more that skull, that skull stomach kind of design that originally was on the Tarn mold start to really be more noticeable now and no doubt will be played out more when the figure is painted and put into proper plastic colors. Um, and when I talk about pro proper plastic colors, what I mean by that is, I mean, when you look at the back of this, we'll, we'll move to the back of it now, you can really tell indeed that this is a test shot and not the final colors of the figure because of the mismatched plastic used on the back cannon. So clearly they're just kind of testing things out and using different plastics just to kind of put the figure out there and, and see how it's working. Uh, again, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, ignore that back piece there. There's like a back piece that some people are uh, confusing as new tooling. It isn't. It's just the way that the Tarn transformation works. Like they clearly turned it the wrong way there. So you could see for where those two back turrets are. Um, now we don't have an alt mode photo. And But if we compare it with the Alex Milne bludgeon alt mode with the toy Tarn alt mode, we do see some kind of connections. There's some stuff going on there. Uh, the double barrel for the main turret, the, the, the four separate you know tank treads that are going on. Even a little bit of the surface detail and tooling 
is there, like those little side cannons. So you could clearly see that there was stuff that was baked in early that was going to show up later on for a bludgeon repaint that was planned. It's not perfect. It's kind of more of that early 2000s, mid 2000s stretch of repaints that we were kind of used to back then. But it's it, it does the job. And I have a gut feeling, and this is just my own personal opinion, but I have a gut feeling that this is one of those more lower effort store exclusive releases rather than a mass retail item that's going to be made in larger numbers and kind of has to do a better job. Because like I've said before with my original segment about store exclusives, those are pre-sold items. They don't have to be amazing because the retailer is already paying for it. Uh, at the end of the day, we don't know in some shape or form if we're going to be getting a Voyager bludgeon that uh, is true to the original design. We've had a lot of weird stuff throughout the years. But again, something like this just kind of keeps that trademark afloat. You know, funny enough, the only other bludgeon figure that kind of is keeping that trademark afloat in 2023 is that more G1 classic looking non-transformable Super 7 Ultimates version. So, you know, it's kind of funny how that is. And considering that one is what, it's like $54 for the Super 7 one. And no doubt this one will have an MSRP of a Voyager class in 2023 of $34.99. One has to look to one's wallet and personal visual preference to find their answer of which they'll want to get, if any at all. As always, let me know what you think about this guy. I mean, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like a low effort kind of release, which is unfortunate with the history of this character. Kind of like Springer and some of those others that are cursed with that. Personally, I'm a little on the fence, and I want to see like what that head sculpt looks like, what are the final plastic colors, maybe the paint deco will pop and really catch my attention. Uh, I love Bludgeon a lot. That's one of my, you know, one of those like top tier characters with me. But sometimes, you know, there's toys that are hit or miss in the history of this character, and I kind of skip out on them. Uh, there's more factory images out there of other figures. Uh, they're not public right now in the Western message boards, so stay tuned for that on the Transformer Slag podcast. They probably will surface over this week. And you know us, we'll cover it. We'll talk about it. We'll break it down. We'll make sense of it. And you guys will uh, let me know what you think about it. And again, thanks again for listening to the Transformer Slag podcast. And we will talk again really, really soon in the near future. A lot of stuff to cover here in the Transformer world. Take care, guys, and thanks again for listening and being entertained, educated, and informed.